by freefall is one of the most important experiments that we do as early physicists, and this is because it governs the way that we experience the world around us. So, for example, it gives us our body weight, it helps keep us stuck to the planet, it describes projectile motion, and lets us accurately predict how we get from point A to point B. Now, this is all wrapped up in a special constant that we call g, the acceleration due to gravity, and we know that it's 9.81 meters per second squared. We can experimentally determine that value using this piece of apparatus, the g by freefall. When we say that an object is in freefall, what we mean is that it's traveling only under the influence of gravity. So every time that I drop this cork, I know that it's gonna to return to my hand at a constant rate, and that rate is g. Now we can take that one step further and say that that rate applies to any object regardless of its mass. So that is where this kit comes in really handy because it comes with two different size balls, one big ball, one little ball, and we can test that hypothesis together. So let me talk you through what I've got set up here. This is the G by Freefall kit from Lascelles, and this is going to let me measure G through a time of flight method. So in principle, how it works is it's going to measure the time taken for a ball to travel this distance. And then I can use that information in an equation of motion to work out a sensible value for G. In terms of equipment, I've got the Lascelles millisecond timer here. I've got the release unit up here and the impact plate at the bottom. How I've wired it up is I've put patch cords across the release unit into gate one and patch cords across the base unit into gate two. The timer is also on mode two, so that's gate one start, gate two stop. So basically start timing here and stop once the ball reaches the impact plate. A couple of important things to remember when you're setting up is to make sure that the patch cords are out of the way so they don't interfere with the flight of the ball and also to secure the retort stand to the bench. And this just makes sure that there's no wobble here. So when we press the release unit, we don't want this retort stand to wobble as it could trigger the impact plate and give you a null reading. So really important, patch cords out of the way and clamp down your retort stand. Now I'm ready to start taking data. So I'm gonna get the big ball and put it in the release unit. You will notice that the time has started ticking and this is because it's detected a change of state in gate one. So I just need to hit reset to clear that off. I now need to know the distance between the ball and the base plate. So I'm gonna get my measuring stick and put it on the base plate and measure to the bottom of the ball. Now it's important that your eye is level with the bottom of the ball so that you reduce parallax error. And I get this to be 44.6 centimeters. So I'm going to make a note of that and translate it into meters. So it will be 0.446 for my distance in meters. Now I need a value for T and for that I need to squeeze the release unit up here. Now there is a bit of a knack to doing this. I need to make sure that I squeeze it nice and sharply so that the ball is released in a clean movement. If I am a little bit hesitant up there, then it might try and hang on to the ball and that will give me a bad value for T. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steady my fingers up here and then give it one sharp squeeze. This gives me a value of T of 0.299 seconds. Now, if we plug this into the equation, which is g equals 2s all over t squared, this gives us a value of g of 9.98 meters per second squared. Now that isn't too far off 9.81, which is what it's meant to be. And to try and get that a bit more accurately, what you can do is you can do 10 measurements of that drop and then work out an average value of t and see what value of g that will give you. If you wanted to use a graph to determine g, you can do this as a function of height. So you can measure the time taken from this height, for example, change the height to here and do it again, change to here and do it again, change to here and do it again. And then if you plot a graph of height h on the y-axis against t squared on the x-axis, you will get a gradient of g over 2. So you can determine g that way. You can even test from really high drop heights, like down a flight of stairs. And this is owing to the sensitivity of the base plate. So if you were to put the base plate on a board and then drop a ball just onto the board, it doesn't have to be the base plate. Um, this will give you a nice long travel time that you should be able to get a good accurate value of G from. And don't forget, you can also use the little ball to show that G is independent of the object's mass. Just make sure that you take another reading for that distance because it will be different from the value that you used previously for the big ball. So if you're not getting a sensible value for g, what's going on and how can we fix it? Well first off remember we need to do a nice clean squeeze on the release unit, the wires need to be out of the way and the retort stand needs to be clamped securely to the table. 
Now this base unit is super, super sensitive. So just to give you an example of that, if I set off the first gate by touching these together, all I've got to do is gently tap on the table and it will trigger the timer. So just something like knocking the table or tapping the table could give you a false reading. So just be wary that no one's leaning on the table or gonna to touch it while the experiment is taking place. I should also point out that the timer blinks when it's been triggered. So when it's blinking, it means that it's got a recorded value and it's unsensitive in that state. So you just need to press reset and take it back to zero and then it's ready to go again. Now, if you're an educator, you will know that there are so many different ways that you can measure G by free fall method that include things like light gates, motion sensors, picket fences. Um, we'd be really interested to know how you do it. So please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching.